YouTube, how you guys doing? Welcome to another episode of the Silver and Gold Stack Attack. As always, a quick thank you for being here for the latest video and for all the incredible support. You guys already know you're a part of, you know it, unequivocally, the best damn community here on YouTube, without a doubt. So today we're going to talk about risky silver ore, silver that you know you're taking a chance on when you buy it, but you buy it anyway. Um, some would look at the silver in my stack and think I'm certifiably insane for adding it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But remember, the journey of a stacker means you buy within your budget, within your comfort zone, and whatever the hell you want to buy without worrying about what others think. It's our choice to make, right? Of course it is. Anyway, in today's video, I'm going to give you three, count them, three examples of risky silver, and then do the big reveal on a pricey silver piece that I just got in, fresh off the press. Uh, one that I took an insanely huge risk on. So make sure you stick around for that. You're really going to want to see it. Uh, it's a beautiful piece, but I do have my concerns. Anyway, with all that said, hey, what do you say we go ahead and roll this thing? Here's the story. All right, the first example of risky silver is sterling silver world coins. Now, on the plus side for this stuff, they're beautiful. Uh, most had small mint runs. They're collectible, and they're a great look in the worlds beyond our borders. Uh, the designs are amazing. But the risk involved with sterling silver is the fact that the purity is 92.5% versus 99.9%. And that makes it a tough buy for a lot of stackers. And if you try selling it to a dealer, there's a very distinct possibility you're going to get less than melt for it. So you could take a decent loss. Look, bottom line for this stuff is the fact that I've never spent over melt price for it, which makes it a fun buy for me. But the majority of stackers out there just aren't going to touch this stuff. It's, it is what it is. And the dealers don't particularly want it. Matter of fact, my dealer gave me a bunch of sterling silver coins, just like these, to uh, throw in the furnace to make something out of it. Anything out of it. He said the stuff just doesn't sell, which is why they hesitate to even buy it from you. There's a very good chance you may get stuck with these coins, or take a loss under melt value, if you actually find a buyer. Uh, in the end, this is silver you can probably avoid unless you're like me and you just love the design factor of it. Uh, it's not worth the hassle. <laughs> Next up, we have generic bars, and you really do have to be careful with these because even though their liquidity is solid, the price you might get back in a sale, yeah, possibly not so much. Now, uh, these things are silver in their most basic form, and while we don't pay spot price for them when we buy them, well, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get spot price or a touch under when you try to sell them. So your best hope is that you got in on them at a lower DCA like uh, just earlier this year in 2024 when uh, spot price for silver was 22 23 an ounce. So, for example, if you went to sell them today and you're, you're in these things for $22 an ounce each, uh, well, spot price right now is $27 and change, so you could actually make a little something on these right now, about $5 an ounce to be exact. So, while these are a great way to add silver weight on a budget, you'll need to be mindful of what you're paying for them in lieu of current spot price. Play the game right, you'll be fine. Just be aware of the risk involved. And on the conversation of silver bars, let's throw in a cautionary tale on buying the premium bars whether they're one ounce, five ounce, 10 ounce, etc. Uh, if there's a collector bar out there with a high premium and you just have to have it, that's fine. I believe we should all reward ourselves every now and then with a nice collectible piece of silver. But just be aware that unless the bar is insanely rare or in demand, you may not get back what you have into them. If something were to happen and the economy went haywire, then your collectible silver is gonna turn into, you guessed it, just another ounce or more silver. So that premium you paid for the bar, just went out the window in a blink of an eye. And lastly, be careful how much you invest in premium silver. Uh, take this Liberty in Britannia, for example. Uh, that was a little over $90 when it sold from the U.S. Mint. And while it does pretty well on eBay, uh, there have been a few examples where it went for far less than mint price, so somebody out there lost some money. Uh, there have been a lot of U.S. Mint products that have blown out the gate when they were sold and just bombed dramatically uh, in value. So you want to be mindful about how much you spend on this stuff. Now, personally, I very rarely buy from the U.S. Mint, so I don't worry about their stuff for the most part. If I do, it's because of something I really wanted and would be keeping even if I sold my entire stack tomorrow. But you can look at all this stuff up here, and you know it's pricier than their uh, standard bullion counterparts. question is, will you get back what you have into it if you have to sell it? Unless Silver Skies over what you paid for it, a dealer is pretty much going to knock this stuff down to earth. Uh, your best bet with, with all this stuff, 
is to sell peer-to-peer -peer if you're stuck selling at all. All right, let's go ahead and get to the silver piece that I bought against my better judgment, but absolutely had to have. <laughs> and it is 2024 Tudor Dragon, and it's a beauty. Um, this is the 10 ounce uh, silver coin version. Now, I've been on the fence when it comes to buying high dollar uh, Royal Mint stuff because you guys know that I uh, pretty much quit on them after the infamous Milkmaid incident of 2023 when I had multiple tubes of 2023 Britannias completely milk spot on me. I mean, tubes of them. Pissed off doesn't even begin to tell you how I was feeling when I saw that. Uh, there are a lot of stackers who will tell you that milk spotting doesn't mean anything, but I disagree. And so will many dealers if you try to sell them something like that uh, when it's loaded with spots. So I had to make a decision on whether I should buy this or not. Uh, I've always wanted one of these in either the Queen's Beast or Tudor Beast. And the Tudor Dragon was worth it enough for me to give it a chance. Now, what I'm hoping for is that thing holds up as well as my other uh, Royal Mint 10-ounce bars. You can see back here, I've had no problems with them so far. And I've got some of the older Britannias for my collection. Uh, they're doing just fine. They're doing just fine. Um, so let's take a quick look, see if I can get this close up without the glare. Yeah, let's see. So you can see the details pretty well. The background is a security background. It's supposed to represent like a chain link. You can see that pretty well. And you can see my face too. How about that? Uh, but this is some really good detail. Really good detail. 2024. This is 10 ounces and it is four nines. So these are four nines. Other side, meh. Chuck. But you can really appreciate the artwork that went into this thing. I love it. I'm happy with it. But I am keeping my fingers crossed that this thing stays as nice as it is now. We shall see, right? We'll see. All right, all right, there you have it, guys. So do you stack any type of risky silver? Uh, would you take a chance on premium Royal Mint products? And do you think silver will go up enough to cover your premium pieces? Uh, be sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. You guys know I love going through them, so make sure you sound off. And that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Silver and Gold Stack Attack. And if you made it this far, well, kudos Just to you. I'll definitely catch up with you in the next episode. But in the meantime, you got to know by now. What do you want to do with your life? I want to stop. Damn right. Get stacked. Stay safe and be well, everyone. I am out of here. Peace, folks. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Oh, yes, and what was that beginning, middle, and end part again?